Hi everyone, thank you for joining me today. I'm Dr. Dita, as you know, I work at Cancer Center for Healing and at Center for New Medicine. So today I'm gonna to talk about cancer prevention because as you guys know, one out of two men in the US do develop cancer in their lifetime and one out of three women. So that's fairly high. So it's the best thing to do is prevent that tumor from forming prevent the cancer from developing uh, before it's too late. So that's why it's important to do cancer prevention or actually also early detection. So a lot of people may say, you know, I have cancer cell in my body. Everyone has cancer cells in their body. Yes, you may have abnormal cell, mutated DNA, abnormal cell in your body, but that doesn't mean they're going to form a tumor in you. So those abnormal cells in your bodies usually are in, engulfed or by your natural killer cell or, you know, they're not going to survive to form a tumor. But if your body has the right environment for cancer to grow, then they could keep add on, add on and form a tumor. So that's why I think it's important for our patient to know where they're at. I usually do cancer preventive testing if I suspect on their blood work something because regular blood work sometimes can tell us a lot. If you see that low white blood cell in your blood work, for example, that means something is going on that your immune system is weakened. For example, you may have elevated mercury. I had a patient a few years ago with low white blood cell and um, had she had high elevated mercury, she would eat at least three serving of fish a week, which is not much in a way. A lot of people out there are doing it, but if it's big fishes like tuna, halibut, sea bass, like sea bass, you know, a lot of people love these good fishes, but they do have mercury. So what you need to do is make sure you do metal testing, make sure you take chlorella, for example, which is a binder to mercury, so you get rid of it. So you need to make sure, ask your doctor to check for mercury level, you know, and sometimes there are specialized blood testing that we do or in the urine that we do that we check the metals. So this patient of mine had low white blood cell and had high mercury level. So, and also did cancer testing on her because of chronic low white blood cell and it was positive, like something is cooking in her. So guess what metals do? Metals like mercury, lead, or aluminum, or they can block your Krebs cycle. Krebs cycle is part of your ATP production. Your mitochondria produces ATP, which is the energy of the cell. And if that blocks, your cell become anaerobic and low oxygen and that's a good environment for cancer to grow so you want to make sure uh, the mercury metals are low so once i detox her from uh, mercury i put her on a dmsa orally and we got rid of her mercury level then after a few months her white blood cells started going up and the cancer testing that i was doing on her it went the hormones early hormones when started going down so she, thank god she's been doing good and she hasn't had suppressed white blood cell yet since we fixed the problem she's doing great and she watches what she eats now we'll check her mercury level at least every six months to a year so that's one example there are other examples that can suppress our immune system and uh, cause us developing cancer. So well, chronic infection, which I talk about a lot on these videos for you guys, chronic parasite infection, chronic viral infection, chronic bacterial infection, they all play a key role in our immune system. So sometimes with the regular blood works, you cannot tell what you have. So that's why you want to do specialized testing, sometimes vital testing, or make sure your gut is good because the gut microbiome is everything. You want to make sure you digest, you don't get bloated after eating, you don't develop rash in the body, you don't have any, gut, any constipations or diarrheas. These are all sign of gut issues and you need to tell your doctor and have it to be addressed. Um, for example, I see a lot of people, cancer patients, developing cancer due to 
constipation, chronic constipation, developing breast cancer, developing uh, colon cancer. Why? Because what happens when you're constipated, you don't have bowel movement every day, you have it every two days, every three days, and this is normal for you. The problem is you are reabsorbing all the toxins that body should ideally eliminate every two to two, two to three times a day, you should be able to eliminate the toxins. But if you're constipated, you don't have bowel movement that often, your body's absorbing all those toxins and chemicals, and that's toxic to your body. That's toxic to your mitochondria, to ATP production, all that. So you wanna make sure uh, you have a good regular bowel movements. Another thing is also um, inhaling toxins. Had a lady with uh, lung cancer because she was working in OR and formaldehyde, she keep inhaling the toxins. Inhalation of toxins is the worst thing. So we, every day when we shower, we are inhaling some chlorine. So make sure uh, your water, unless you have a filter uh, system in your house, um, that water is not that great. Make sure you have your fan on, the air is good, um, so you don't inhale those toxins. But one of the key thing is, it's important to detox, to get rid of these toxins, because it's hard to be, be in a perfect environment. We all get exposed to toxins. We all inhaling pesticide, herbicide, all kind of things. But like, for example, drinking green tea regularly, green tea helps the body detox and it's a great antioxidant. And also using saunas, like infrared sauna is a great way of detoxing the toxins and chemicals out of your body. Like cadmium that you could get from by eating shrimp, for example, that's uh, fairly toxic to your mitochondria as well, toxic to your body. But cadmium is one of the metals that you could sweat it out. But unfortunately, you cannot sweat mercury out. You cannot sweat lead out. And those metals, you need a special binders or chelating agents um, to get them out of you. Make sure you tell your doctor, check your metals. Make sure you don't have you have a good gut. Another thing is stress. Stress plays a key role in our body. Stress, as I always talk about, it, it does suppress the immune system. So make sure you don't stress about everything. Make sure you have a way to get rid of the stress. So initially when I started here, it was fairly stressful for me. I sometimes would feel so sad, go home and cry after some of the cases. I'm like, this is gonna destroy me. This is not gonna work for me. So what I started doing is go to yoga after, after work. Every day I went to yoga. I kind of, you know, de-stressed. That definitely helped me. And I made sure I did my cardio, I did, um, then I, that's how I cope with the stress. We all go through stress. We need to make sure we do something about it. Otherwise, it's going to affect our body. And that's not good for our mental health, for our immune system, all that. And then drinking water is a good way of flushing toxins. And sometimes, you know, some supplements, like if my patients are drinking alcohol, for example, I say, you know what, take NAC. N-acetylcysteine is a precursor to your glutathione. What is glutathione? Glutathione is a major antioxidant that your liver produces that protects you against all the free radicals that we're exposed to. And it, um, so that's why it's important to make sure we have enough antioxidant in the body. Problem is eating food also produces a lot of free radicals. So you don't want to eat too much food. So eat good, healthy, green, uh, colorful fruit, uh, foods. Like I discussed even for memory loss before, how um, colorful fruit and vegetables prevents dementia and all that. And it also helps with cancer because they're high in antioxidant. They protect us. A lot of people think too much exercise is good, but it's not. Too little is not good, too much is not good. It's a moderate amount you wanna do like jogging 20 minutes, five days a week. The reason is if you do cardio, let's say for an hour, your body's producing a lot of free radical that liver cannot handle and produce 
antioxidant to help you to protect you so sometimes people who run like 30 miles a week or 20 miles half a marathon or excessive exercise like that it does really in long term damage your body so you want to make sure you consume a lot of antioxidant to protect yourself so there are testing that we could do to know your antioxidant and free radicals the levels to see where you're at so um, make sure you guys do that it's important to do it yearly to know where you're at people are taking much of supplement everyone around us i mean our patient crowd are taking supplement but does those supplement get absorbed in you do you know that so that's why it's important to do yearly vitamin testing which a lot of my patients are familiar to that because i make sure we, i do that on them like bees what are bees important like b12 and folate play a key role in our dna in our genome so if you are chronic deficient in b12 and folate that can also lead to cancer and problem genetic mutation so as simple as these can prevent us lifestyle is like 75 percent pre prevention all this stuff i talked about plays a key role in preventing cancer sleeping as we discussed before, uh, uh, in terms of memory loss, if we are sleep deprived, it affects our memory. It also affects our body in terms of our immune system. A lot of people say, oh, I sleep four hours. I feel perfectly fine. I'm used to this. I'm doing great. I'm sleeping five hours, but that's not good for your immune cells. That's not good for your immune system. So as you can tell, I had a cold recently and that was because of sleep deprivation. A couple of nights of sleep deprivation, it can cause, suppress my immune system and I could get a cold. So yeah, sleep plays a key role. It's important to um, sleep, have an optimal hours of sleep, seven to eight hours. We have a test called cancer profile test. That's to know, find out what's going on in the body in terms of cancer. Are you producing those hormones? That body gonna produce, body gonna form a tumor in you. So that's one of the tests I started to do a lot, a lot of my patients to figure out where their body is going. If that test is positive, then I know something is cooking in you. Then we want to do further workup to figure that out, and then we, if that's positive, then sometimes uh, I do. Um, uh, Onco trace is another testing to see have you formed a tumor in you. A lot of time I tell patients if you have a tumor, you don't have to necessarily go biopsy it. There are testing called liquid biopsy now in US actually it's it's getting there, but they're not uh, it's not complete. The liquid biopsy is not perfect in US yet, but they're working on it. There is a new uh, a new one that FDA just recently approved. But in Europe, Germany and Greece, they've been using it for many years. So we send our patients blood, we do a liquid biopsy. If I have a tumor in my body, let's say I have a tumor in my arm, it's gonna produce circulating tumor cell in my blood, which when I do that test is gonna turn positive, say something is going on and it's, so it gives me information. I think it's important to do stuff especially a lot of people say oh my family i don't have any cancer in my family i don't need to be worried about it i'm healthy i have no symptom but believe it or not 95 percent of cancers are epigenetic environmental factor changing our genes like the stuff i just discussed too much pesticide herbicide sleep deprivation stress nutritional deficiency all this stuff can affect our gene and lead to cancer so and hormonal imbalance if our thyroid is low our body temperature is low then we're not functioning right our body temperature should be greater than 98 i see a lot of 97s and that's not good your body temperature is not optimal so it's important to have a good body temperature for natural killer cell to work so that's why hormones should be balanced important and if i have too much estrogen in my body that can cause increased risk of breast cancer, colon cancer, and other cancers. So it's important to measure your hormones, do a comprehensive blood work, do the extra vitamin testing, metal testing, to do some sort of cancer testing to figure out what's going on to be ahead of the game. 
so don't so you don't get surprised one day something popping up and of course important to do your colonoscopies important to do abdominal pelvic ultrasound yearly check your thyroid um, it's good to do ultrasound but in terms of imaging I'm not that keen on doing CT scans all the time more than three CT scan can change your genome can cause um, cell changes and that can lead to cancer itself a lot of people are talking about mammograms they said oh I don't I don't want to do mammogram at all you know I feel like every imaging does give us information it's not like mammogram should be excluded because of radiation we do need to have mammogram because it shows calcification that thermography breast ultrasound doesn't show so a lot of our patient wants to just stick to thermography and breast ultrasound but you know yes thermography is helpful it shows blood flow it shows before even a tumor is formed so it's good to do that so it's best because some tumors may be cold. They may not have blood flow in them. So what is it good to do a breast ultrasound to know? But the next year I may do a mammogram because mammogram shows calcification. I don't like to do mammogram, let's say from age 40 to 50, if I have my patient do mammogram every year, that's 10 to 30% increased risk of breast cancer due to the mammogram radiation. So I wouldn't necessarily do it every year, I would prep them for the radiation. I would have them maybe even do it once every three years. So that would be a good thing. You know, not do it necessarily every year. Unless you have any abnormality on your mammogram, let's say they see something and they say, oh, it looks benign. Then you want to make sure you do thermography. Maybe you want to do the uh, liquid biopsy testing to grease. It's always good to be proactive. And also, I always say, don't ignore any symptom in your body. Blood clot, for example, is a symptom. You know, blood clot, you form a clot, but it's due to because your body is not optimal. You have too much inflammation. A lot of people who develop cancer or who have cancer they don't even know, they go to the hospital with blood clot. And then years later or the same year or the same time, they find out, oh, they actually do have a tumor as well, which was a never diagnosed. So don't ignore anything you have. You know, some people have some factors, genetic factor deficiencies that increases the risk of them getting blood clot, but even that can be a triggering factor causing it. Just because I have the genes doesn't mean I have organic develop rheumatic arthritis or depression. If just you have the genes, lifestyle plays a key role. That's not your destiny. So a lot of people with BRCA1, BRCA2, you know, they like, oh, I have to remove my breast, I have to remove my pancreas, but you have BRCA gene receptor in your brain, are you gonna go remove your brain? No, the lifestyle and all that plays a key role too. If you have a healthy lifestyle, doesn't mean you're gonna change that gene that is mutated that cause that you're gonna develop cancer. Yes, you wanna be more proactive, you wanna do stuff, but surgery is not necessarily the solution. Also, if you have any question about cancer prevention, please leave down below. I'd be happy to help you and answer those questions. Thank you.